Today we're going to talk about the biggest mistake when carrying out a commercial blower door test. Okay, Joseph, so we're going to talk about pinch points in buildings when it comes to blow door testing, but let's talk about blow door testing itself first, especially multi-fan air tightness testing. It is a very exciting development in the building code in the 2019 version because it finally introduced a method to quantify how severe the air leakage in buildings are. And they are using a method called blow door test. Practically speaking, it's about using a fan that pump air into the building to quantify how much is required to bring the building into a certain pressure level. It sounds really straightforward and in most cases they are. But in some more complicated or large building, that can create a lot of pitfalls for the um, blower door tester if they are not understanding the full principle. So Basically, we induce a pressure of 50 pascals in a building envelope and that pressure needs to be equal throughout the whole building envelope. Yes, in an ideal world, if you conduct a test according to the standard, you need to try to maintain the pressure as evenly as possible all over your building envelope. It's within 10%. Yes. Mm. All right, so now let's talk about this pinch point issue because there can be buildings that have massive atriums in the middle of the building. There can be buildings where there are no atriums and all you've really got for connectivity to all the floors are stairwells. So what are these issues that we have in the way of pinch points? To explain what pinch point is, we need to go back to what a blower door um, testing is. Because we try to put air into the building, we need some mean to distribute the air throughout the building envelope so the pressure is identical and by doing that the air needs to go through certain pathway if the pathway is restricting the airflow which means the pathway that pinch point is smaller than the gaps in the building envelope then you have a problem so for any buildings that are 20 meters cubed per hour per meter square you're pretty much guaranteed to have pinch points. The leakier the building, the harder it is to test. Exactly. Mm. To make a case simple, it's like if you fill a bucket with just one hole, you can use a garden hose to fill it up, even with one hole leaking it out. But if you've got a sieve there, there's no way you can fill. What does it mean if you've got an actual pinch point to the overall pressures of the building? Well, if you've got a pinch point in your building, the very first Thing you will notice is the space before the pinch point from your fan yeah. you got a much higher pressure than the rest of the building yeah. and if you are measuring your reference pressure in that zone you will have a way better result mm. than what the building actually is and so what what can the difference be in result of reality and well it it can be multitude you know in in one of the example that we do it purposefully to show the difference, it changed the air leakage from 8 and 14. It cut it by half. Wow. But in some more extreme case, it can be only 20%. So the real result permeability rate was 14 meters cubed per hour per meter square at 50 pascals. Yep. Extrapolated, and then we would disconnected the tube from the center of the building, and then the leakage rate went down to 8. Or under 8 under eight meters cubed per hour. It's a massive difference, isn't yep. it? So when it comes to commercial air tightness testing, it's super important that it's documented where the inside and outside reference pressure tubes are located, what floor, what part of the floor, and then, and then moving on from there, you can be a lot more confident that the leakage rate that has been documented is representative of the building. And also where the fans were set up during the test is critical as well. Absolutely. 